So the first example is very, very gentle. Why don't you open up to um, exercise 1A? And um, the first thing you look at is the most simple kind of boring you can do, which is what they call, I'll leave this here. It's what they call a flat rate loan. Flat rate loan. Now, think back to FM2. Think back to FM2. When you hear the words flat rate, what does that trigger in your mind? What's that? This is a straight line. Okay, if you were to graph this, the kind of interest, the kind of interest that you're going to have to pay back, right? Because it's a straight line, it's not compounding. It's it's constant. We it starts with an S. Simple interest. Very good. Okay. So when you see that, you should think simple interest. Now, simple interest, I think, is literally the first formula on your formula data sheet. Yeah. But you learnt this back in year 9 and 10. What's the formula for simple interest? I, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm still good at maths. Okay, good, right? So, it's not complicated. Let me just remind you how this looks. That's fine, that's fine. I'm not going to rub off any of this. Um, as an example, okay, I will start off as gently as possible, right? What is the interest payable? And just know that little word there, payable, signals to you. Yeah, it's the same idea as if someone was, um, as if you were lending someone else money. But the fact that it's payable indicates to you, oh yeah, actually, I owe this back to them. Okay, so that's the that indicates the direction the money's going in. Okay, sorry. What's the interest payable on? And so, if you're being asked for the interest payable, you should expect to see in the rest of the question. The, what's this again? The principal, how much you are borrowing, the rate at which you are borrowing it, and how long you have borrowed it for. Okay, so I've got some numbers here. How about... Okay, so this is nice and simple. It requires an un modified use of this I equals PRN formula. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I equals, all right, what would you like me to write? Okay, I can just quote. So my next thing is I've got to be able to demonstrate I can substitute into this formula, right? So my principle is the 5,000. My rate, 6.7%. Okay, so I have a choice here. I can either write 6.7% or I'm going to encourage you to do this for reasons I'll explain in a second. I'm going to encourage you to convert that into a decimal. Um, 0 0.067. 0 .067, and then I'm going to multiply by 4. Okay. Now, quick question to you guys. Why do you think I'm encouraging you to convert this to a decimal on the fly? Any suggestions? I can think of at least two reasons. It shows that we know what, it, what the percentage actually is. Okay, very good. So it actually helps you get better at converting this to a decimal, right? That's a big plus. A second reason is, I phrased this question so you had to find out what the interest was. This would be some dollar amount at the end, okay? But you can see I could just as easily have phrased the question like this. Tell you how much interest you paid, tell you how much the principal was, and how long you had it, and then ask you, hey, what's the interest rate? Like, what percentage was it, okay? Now, your calculator is not going to hand back to you some number with a percentage. It's always going to hand back to you a decimal. So you can't avoid this, even though the decimal button's, sorry, the percentage button is nice. You need to be able to read and interpret this. So you might as well get good at it. Has someone got a number for me? 1,000. Wonderful. That's it. This is not complicated, is it? Okay. Um, I will point out, just as we've seen in the quiz that we just did, uh, when you have a look at this question, Apart from the obvious things, like say the numbers, what might you underline? What do you think is like crucial information in this question? Like the time periods. The, the time periods. Now, where are the time periods tucked into there? Okay, Ye years is pretty obviously a time period, and then per annum. Okay, now you've got to watch for these. I gave you a simple example to start with where they happen to match together, but they might not match, right? Let's just change this a little bit. Let's take the same question, but instead of saying four years, let's suppose it said 300 days. Hmm, what am I going to have to do here? It's different, yeah. Uh, 
pretty much the same formula, but instead of times 4, it's times 300 over 365. Okay, so I've got the same principle, right? The rate, it, uh, sorry, it hasn't changed, right? But the amount of time has changed, and it's not a whole nice number, right? So 300 days is 300 over 365 of a year. Right, does that make sense? Obviously, if it was 365, then it'd be exactly one year. But this is a nice awkward number for us. So then you say, okay, sure, whatever that number happens to be. Okay. Are there any questions on that? Make sense? We're always going to give you um, two things. Number one, uh, we'll give you information if we want you to do something specific. Like, hey, assume that a year is 365.25. They'll say that if they want something wonky. But otherwise, just like with the radar chart we looked at um, earlier, they will actually give you a threshold and we'll accept answers. So long as you tell me, so long as you tell me. If you actually, um, who's got my, you've got my calculator. Can someone actually find out what 300 over 365 is? Like as a decimal? Has someone got it? Yeah. Uh, Oh, okay, so you've gone, sorry, 275. Oh, oh right. Oh, yeah, okay, no, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, yeah? How many decimal points? Uh, that'll do. Oh, okay, cool. Actually, no, 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 I take it back. Give me two more. One, nine. One, nine, mm -hmm. dot, dot, dot. Okay, now, think about this, right? If, thinking, this is a pretty easy question, you went straight here, but then you used some other number, like 365.25 or 366, because... 2016 this year or something like that okay if you go straight here the fact that you did that that you chose a different number is kind of disguised from your working right Be because the working is not there uh, in the same way if you went straight to this number it's like where where'd that number come from like did you were you able to accurately represent that it was this number of days out of a year whereas this I think makes it completely unambiguous what you did and if I wrote 365.25 there it's obvious that I understand I've demonstrated the process. So this is just speaking to why you should put working, even for a one mark question. Uh, if there's something that I've noticed over the last few years, this would be one mark. Pretty simple because it's calculator work, right? But that line's important. It's useful for you and it's useful for the markers. Okay?